Like it felt like the bone was actually sticking out of my foot. And all of a sudden, Brown goes, right? So we, so everybody freezes. And I'm like, Brown, Brown, what's going on, Brown? And when it went down, it lit their area on fire. And the fire chased them all the way to a canyon. And so it was either jump down the cliff or run through the fire. So they had to run through the fire to get to us. Rick Roberts, uh, United States Marines. Um, and I was with 3rd Battalion, 1st Marines. I was in there from 97 uh, to 2001. Yeah. And I got out at the, at the rank of sergeant. All right, what's up, Rick? What's going on, Josh? Thanks for being here, brother. Yeah, man. Um, all right, let's just, start it, let's just start it off, man. Why don't you tell me um, where you were from, maybe born and raised, mm -hmm. and uh, where you grew up, and a little bit about your childhood upbringing. Okay. Um, born in Alameda. Uh, my old man was Navy, career Navy, so uh, born there. Uh, moved down to San Diego when I was three, so really that's my hometown. And um, grew up all over the place, in San Diego, Sara Mesa, Chula Vista, National City, went all over the place. Um, not in the best of neighborhoods, uh, you know, through, um, I say seventh through my, my late teen years until I left to the core. Mm -hmm. um, and... Was um, it like a gang neighborhood type deal? Or? Yeah, yeah it, was, yeah, it was pretty rough. I mean, it was, it was a, you know, mid to late 80s, yeah. you know, and, and that's when gang violence was huge. You know, mm -hmm. everybody had bars on the windows and, you know, gunshots at night were normal, you know, ghetto birds out yeah. and everything. And, um, you know, I never banged. I, I was never like a gang banger, you know, but when you live in a neighborhood like that, you kind of got to like dress the part and be the part a little bit. You, you know what I mean? Yep. I was mischievous and, you know, did some things, but not enough to get me in any real trouble. You know, we, um, you know, it's funny, we, we, um, we were in Chula Vista, and uh, we were just about to move from Chula Vista to Paradise Hills. And I was really close with, uh, you know, with, with my mother. And, you know, my, my father, he was Navy. You know, he was gone a lot because um, uh, he was either deployed or he was stationed up in Alameda. Um, so he would drive down on the weekends. Um, he did everything he could, you know, to be, you know, to be with us, you know, but it was either pomp or... Alameda, he gets stationed in San Diego sometimes. So I got really close with mom. And um, I wanna say it was right before my uh, freshman year, she, she had told us that she was diagnosed with AIDS. And um, back then, like that was a death sentence, you know? And, and I thought that that was it. Like she was gonna be gone in a year, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that did a number, and that whole time you, you thought that, you know, we were preparing for her to go first, you know? And then my senior year of high school, you know, my dad had retired 23 years, um, senior chief, and <laughs> dude, my dad was badass. You know, yeah. he did two tours in Nam, you know, his first tour, uh, he was a river rat, and, um, he was a smart man because by the time the second tour came around, he said, fuck that. And he went and became an operational specialist. So they did like radar and navigation and everything. Um, Dumb. Um, being a river rat, I'm sorry, because mm -hmm. yeah. I, I recall someone else out, uh, was telling their story and they talked about brown water teams where they would cruise down the rivers and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Is that what yes. he was doing? Yes. Yeah, so he was on the gunboats mm. uh, going up and down uh, the rivers. Now there's different size gunboats, you know, um, you know and, and he would range on the small ones to the big ones, you know, um, the kind that you see like in Apocalypse Now mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, didn't talk too much about it. Didn't really want to ask him. You know, you had to wake him up by his feet at night and stuff like that because you didn't want to be up in his chest area, you know. Um, no, I mean, he'd like, you, you don't know what's going to happen because sometimes he could, if you were to do that, then he could be cool and 
you could try to wake them up up here and it won't be so cool, mm. you, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, so he didn't really talk about that stuff. He, he couldn't watch like the movies uh, about Vietnam back in, the, back in those days, like Platoon or Full Metal Jacket. He couldn't watch Apocalypse Now. He couldn't watch those movies. Mm. I think the only Vietnam era movie that he ever watched was um, uh, Good Morning Vietnam. Because <laughs> he, he liked Robin Williams. He thought he, he, he liked him a lot, you know. Yeah, rest in peace, huh, yeah. Robin Williams. Yeah, so he, you know, so our, the, the whole time, you know, that we're, we're thinking that, that he's, um, that, that, you know, that he's going to outlive my mom, right? Because she has AIDS, right? Mm -hmm. Well, he, um, uh, in October, October 2nd of 92, he had, um, he'd been diagnosed with cancer, mm. right? He had a seizure at work, you know? And um, so he was diagnosed, took him over to Naval, the Naval Hospital, Balboa, and um, diagnosed with cancer. And his diagnosis went from, you know, hey, you, you're gonna have five years. And within like, as the weeks progressed, you have five years, you have two years, you have one year, you have six months. Get ready. Wow. You know, so um, he actually passed away November 28th. Um, so less than two months. Wow. After his diagnosis. Went from being six years to two months? Less than two months. Wow. Yeah, it took him quick, you know. It took him quick, man. And uh, so that left, you know, me, I'm the oldest. And... Uh, left me, my my brother, and my sister, and and mom, and everything. How and old were you? I was seventeen. Mm. Yeah, and um, yeah. So so you know, I I graduate high school and I go to college, um, but it was more social for me. You know, I I don't I think I was really spinning my wheels. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, and also just not only just trying to grow up and trying to figure out what it is that you want to do, mm -hmm. you know, but also trying to be a mentor and try to help raise your younger brother and sister. My sister was five years younger uh, than me and my, my brother, uh, eight, eight years younger, you know. Um, but um, I had joined the um, San Diego PD Explorer program mm. and, and I was like, you know what, I want to be a cop. So... Um, I go through that program and I turn 21 and I realize that, you know, I don't have a degree. I was explorer for a little bit, but I'm not quite ready. Right. And I was spinning my wheels. Um, and I figured it, I, I was like, I have to, I'm like, I have to do something, you know, I can't just sit around at home, you know? So I decided I was going to join the military, you know? And, you know, <laughs> take back to my, back to my father. Um, you know, I, as I was about to join the military, you know, I remember my dad as he was, you know, he knew that he was going to pass away, you know, and, you know, he told me that, you know, he was son, he goes, listen, if you ever join the military, and I told him at that, at that time, I'm never joining the military. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like he was always gone and stuff, you know, I'm like... Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm not doing that, you know? So he says, well, listen, he goes, if you join the military, he goes, go Navy or go Air Force. He goes, don't go Army. He goes, he goes There's, they're no good. He goes, but, he goes, whatever you do, don't join the Marines. He goes, those are some crazy sons of bitches. <laughs> and I said, what? <laughs> so here I am, you know, standing in front of, you know, the recruiter's office and I joined the Marines, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, just uh, pissing that off every which way I can go, you know. And so, yeah, so I joined, I joined the Marines. What, uh, what, what drove you to go to the Marine Corps recruiting office after he said, you know, whatever you do, don't go to the Marines? I don't know, man. He, it, I know that's what he said, you, you know. But um, I just felt, I felt drawn to it, 
Um, you know, uh, it's, it's the hardest boot camp out there, you know, and I just, um, I felt like I was just um, like personally in a space where I needed to be challenged. Mm. You know, I needed something to push me hard, you know, right. that, that I needed someone to like knock the, the laziness out of me, to knock, you know, to really motivate me, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and I just felt that that was the biggest challenge, you know. So, so yeah, that's, that's, that's why I joined All right. the core, you know. Um, now, initially, I had actually signed up to be an MP. Mm. You know, like sign the papers and everything. Right. Right. And, you know, they're so far out on MEPS and everything. I, I think it was like three, three months out or something. But um, my recruiter calls me up like three weeks later. And I remember him, friggin' uh, Staff Sergeant Rodriguez, right, mm -hmm. tells me, he goes, hey, he goes, hey, hey, Rick, listen, I got, listen, I know that you want to be an MP. I know you want to get into law enforcement, you know. He goes, but I got something for you. Listen, how does this sound? United States Marine Corps Security Forces. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dude, you're a civilian. You're, you know, you're Joe Schmo. You don't know. And, yeah. and I said, man, that sounds high speed. So he goes, come on in. I'll, I'll show you a video. So he's showing me a video of buds. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, he does. He goes past, like like the, the water training and stuff, and he goes to all like the, the CQB training yeah. and stuff, which is some of the stuff that, 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 <laughs> that, that we did, but he fast forwarded to all of that, right? And, and he sold me on it, you know? He's, yeah. like, he's like, you can do this. He goes, he goes, and you get a clearance. They have the PRP program and he's doing all of this, right? Yeah. And I'm like, all right, all right, word. I'm like, okay, that'll, that'll look better. That'll right. look better in my jacket. So, so, so I go to boot camp, right? And, um, you know, they, at the time they had all of the different, um, uh, different MOSs kind of separated, you know. Um, you had more infantry guys than, than anything, mm -hmm. you know. So you couldn't stick all the infantrymen in one platoon, right? But so I was in, I was at the top deck right across from the chow hall, uh, at MCRD, and um, the, the, the drill instructor for the grunts comes upstairs, and he says, I want all my infantrymen, and we're all standing at the POA, and I'm just standing there. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not infantry. I'm security forces, <laughs> and then everybody's flying past me and stuff, right, and then drill instructor Sergeant Brown comes running, running. At a, I swear the guy jumps like 10 feet, takes a leap, <laughs> at me and just straddles me and he's just screaming in my ear. He's like, Roberts. And I'm like, I'm like, yes, sir. He goes, you're security forces. I'm like, yes, sir. He goes, get your ass up there. You're infantry. That's when I found out I was infantry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm running up there. I'm running up to the quarter deck to get thrashed. And I'm like, what the? <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Oh man. So so yeah, so I get up there and, and we get thrashed and everything. And um yeah, that's when I found out I was I was in 03. Oh fuck. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> was it now was there anybody else out the security forces in boot camp? Um there anyway. there were I don't think there was anybody in my in in my platoon. Yeah. Uh, in my platoon. <laughs> there was a guy that was actually in the infantry platoon. That was security forces, mm -hmm. uh, my buddy Sanchez, and um, I didn't know him at the time, right? But quick story about Sanchez is that um, he actually crossed deck from the Air Force, mm -hmm. and he was nine months. I, I mean, not nine months. He was like nine years. He was like a tech sergeant or something. He was like an E five, E six, or mm -hmm. whatever, right? And he, um, but you know, when they they brought him into the corps, they you have to go through everything, and he ended up having to take PFC, so he ended up like starting from like the bottom, right? Well, I remember we were, uh, we were field day, right? And um, he comes up and he knocks on the, knocks on the door. We're all spy at the hatch. And he goes, and then Sanchez comes in and uh, drill instructor, Sergeant Salinas, this little 
tiny Mexican dude. Um, man, he, he's all, he's all, he's all, Sanchez, so get your ass over here. He's all, he's all, yes, sir. He goes, he goes, you were in the Air Force, weren't you? He's all, yes, sir. He goes, what was your rank? He goes, this recruit was like, a, like E6, whatever. Yeah. He was like, and then all of a sudden, like, you see the other drill instructors run, like, gum uh. at him. He's like, are you freaking stupid? Are you stupid? And they're like, ah, they're all, like, circling <laughs> him and stuff, dude. And he's sitting there, like, he's just sitting there taking it, right? Mm-hmm. And we're all cleaning the house. And he's all, and then, and then uh, Selena takes him. He goes, you get your ass over here, Sanchez. He brings him over, and he, and he makes him stand in front of the mirror. He goes, now stand there. And he's standing, he's standing at POA. He goes, now stand there. He goes, now repeat after me. I'm not stupid, you are. So Sanchez is standing there at the position of attention for like five, ten minutes in the mirror like this. I'm not stupid, you are. <laughs> I'm not stupid, you are. <laughs> and I, I remember that because I was on my way to the head to, to go clean and stuff. And him and I, our eyes locked. And I don't know him right now. Him and I, our eyes locked. And I looked at him and I'm like, <laughs> and I just, I keep going. And then turns out that him and I end up going to, uh, we went to SOI together. Uh, we were in the same company, in the same platoon. Uh, we went to uh, security forces school together. Oh, wow. Um, and then we ended up at Banger together, mm. you know. And, yeah, and we ended up, like, uh, me, him, and a buddy of mine, Sierra, we were all squad leaders together, you know. So that was, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, what was... Um... What was boot camp uh, like for you? Um, like when you initially went in, like, man, I'm gonna tell you, I didn't know how short I was. <laughs> 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 I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea, you know. So I get I get to boot camp because all of my, you know, like um, a lot of my friends. I'm I'm half Pacific Islander. I'm half Guamanian, and right. majority of my friends in San Diego were all Filipino. You know, so I'm like average height, you know, <laughs> and, you know, all the parties that we go to, like the clubs that we go to, they were mainly Filipino, like uh, the underground parties. They were all Filipino, dude. It was, you know, so, yeah. you know, if you were like 5'10", you were tall, you, you know. Yeah. And um, so I showed up to boot camp and I'm like, I'm like, what the? I'm at the back of the formation, <laughs> 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 you know, and. Um, I know you don't believe it, but I was a fat body, right? Mm-hmm. And so I had the stripes and everything. But did you get a um, um a, a diet tag? It wasn't a diet tag. It, it was just it, no. It I guess I don't I don't re, I don't remember being a, having a, a tag or anything. Yeah. But um, there was definitely different. Uh, I had certain restrictions, like yeah. I wasn't allowed to eat bread and certain things well i, I went you know? in I, I say that because i went in overweight as well mm-hmm. and they gave me a fucking diet i i remember it was blue it had a fucking diet tag so when you were going through the chow hall mm-hmm. you know they got two scoops and one's a fucking diet one and, and you know you're seeing all these some of them had double rations and you're seeing these <laughs> motherfuckers get double portions and they're putting yeah. fucking bird food on your plate yeah, you're fucking thing. pissing you off man yeah yeah yes um, no no they it was more embarrassing for us because we had the we had like red stripes on our stuff and, mm. you know, but, um, yeah, yeah. So, so we did that. Um, so a couple of things that stick out from boot camp is, um, one is that I had my wisdom teeth pulled when I was in boot camp mm. and, you know, it's, it's funny cause I, I see, see these, hear these stories of folks going through, uh, getting their wisdom teeth pulled and they're down for like days and sometimes a week, Mm -hmm. you know, let me tell you, all right, I had my wisdom teeth pulled like around like three, like three in the afternoon, like that's when they started, (laughs) right, Um, and I was supposed to get like 48 hours of like, like bed rest or something like that, right, I had one day, so I had the remainder of when I got back, and it had the following day, right, and then after that, we had formation runs, and I was out there running with everybody else, uh, running the obstacle course, spitting blood, uh, you, you know, man. like delirious, like jaw pain, climbing the ropes, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you know, they didn't Oof. care, man. Um, and, 
and that was actually um, the, the first time, it goes back to the first time I ran the obstacle course. Um, not very tall, I'm only 5'5", five, five, you know, on paper. And, <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, your first obstacle is that the two bars, mm -hmm. right? Well, I couldn't figure out how to, how to get up there and use the leverage from the pole to push myself up to get it, right? Well, Sergeant Salinas comes through and he gives me a demo. So he shows me, and he was about my height, but he also weighed like probably 30, 40 pounds less than me, you know? So I, I wasn't able to figure it out. I wasn't getting it, right? So he goes, come here, you dumbass. So he goes, he goes, I'm gonna grab you by your waist and I'm gonna pull you up, right? I'm like, all right, sir. So, he, so, so I, I, I hunch over and he grabs me by my waist. He goes, all right, go. And I go up and I clack his jaw. Oh. I clack his jaw. This dude falls on the deck. I look to the side. His smoky bear's rolling around in the dirt. Oh. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, I just stand to the POA. And I'm telling you, I'd like everybody else watch Full Metal Jacket for like three weeks before boot camp. <laughs> yeah. And just the boot camp scene, right? I'm preparing to get like kicked in the neck. And I was going to be okay with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I was ready for it, right? And, and he just comes over, he, he walks over, he, does, he picks up his smoky, he dusts it off, and he puts it on, and he gets in my ear, and there's, he goes, Roberts, listen, <laughs> if you don't beat that motherfucker in front of you, your ass is mine for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a kid, he was like, like on the, already on the second obstacle. Mm. Man, I... I I knew how to navigate that first obstacle. Yeah. I was able to get up and, oh, and I beat wow. him and I beat him. But um, yeah, he did not thrash me. <laughs> he said he said I was very lucky. Wow. You know, but that was that was funny. Yeah. Oh, I've been shitting my pants. <laughs> Smoky um, bear on the deck. Yeah. Did you uh, while in while you were in boot camp, were you able to communicate with your family mm. in, in any which way? Yeah, it was um, it was all through letters. You know, it's not like. Like nowadays, I think these kids have, they use uh, this thing called electronic mail or email or mm. something like that, right? So, um, yeah, it was, all, it was all written letters. And, you know, funny being from San Diego, th that, I think that was probably um, kind of a li little bit torturous too because we were on the top deck and I could actually see San Diego skyline at night. Mm -hmm. I was on the top bunk and, mm. you know, it's Wednesday nights and it's like, you know, college night, and I know my buddies are out there clubbing, and I'm in the rack. <laughs> Not, <laughs> you know, but, you know, I, I would get letters, uh, you know, my, my mom would, would write me on a regular basis. Um, um, I, would, I would get letters once in a while from, like, my siblings and stuff, but it was mostly, yeah, yeah it was mostly mom, and I, I would write letters to my grandmother. Um, I was close to her, too. Mm. So write letters to them, but it, it was such a good, you know, such a good feeling, you know, to get up there and mm -hmm. mail received, you know, you were really bummed if you didn't get anything, yeah. you know, but, you know, mom kept, mom kept the letters going. Mm. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Um, where'd you go after boot camp? Um, after boot, it was uh, SOI. So went up to Pendleton for that. And, and S what's SOI? Uh, School of Infantry. Yeah, right, right there off of Barcelona, mm. right before you get to Horno, and um, you know, uh, you know when you're at when you're at your when you're in school, you know, unless you're I think unless you're a sergeant or above or married or whatever, you're not allowed to have a vehicle, mm. right? Well, being that I'm from San Diego, and my dad had we we had tags on the car, and it was an E8 with the uh, with the senior chief symbol on it mm. and stuff. I was like, man, I'm going to bring my car up here. <laughs> I'm like, these guys don't know. Right. You know, but I never got caught. Oh, wow. I never got caught. I had my, uh, I think the first chance, I think I was up there for like, like a, a week, like two weeks. And that was more receiving. And yeah, mom let me bring my car up and, and I go down on the weekends and nobody figured out that, that it was me. I'd park it like far away mm -hmm. and I'd, you know, I'd walk down and go get it. What was yeah. the school of infantry like? Um, it was, it was, um, 
it was challenging. It was it was a lot more challenging than uh, than than boot. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, you know before before boot camp, I had broke broke my foot, mm -hmm. uh, or actually yeah before uh, when I was like nineteen, I broke my foot. I had uh, five screws and a pin in my foot, oh. and doctors told me at the naval hospital that I'd never be able to run, stand in one place for a long time um, again. You know, so, you know, I find myself in the Marines and you got to run everywhere. You got to hump around with, you know, 80 to 100 pounds on your back, you know, and um, it really didn't bother me throughout boot camp. Uh, but it, sh it showed itself in, in SOI um, when we did like the I think it was like a 22 mile uh, hump, mm -hmm. you know, that. Yeah, that that one. That yeah. one did it. Yeah. yeah, that one did it. Like, like, we we got back to the house and we had finished. And um, I remember our instructor because we were all like, we were all like panting, and you know, it was our first time doing something like that, right? And 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 this guy was a motivator, you know. He he was just like, he's like, these guys aren't ready. He's like, these aren't ready. He goes, he goes, we need we need some more. So they went to the to the back. Was that MP Hill? Yeah. On, on the back, right? That's all mm -hmm. paved and everything, right? You have to head all the way back there. And I'm telling you, Josh, my foot, like, it felt from that moment, from the time that we stepped off at the house until we came back, it actually felt that I broke my foot again. Like, it felt like the bone was actually sticking out of my foot, wow. you know? But we went, you know, we went up and came back and, you know, it wasn't sticking out of my foot. It was, mm. it was there, but yeah. Yeah, it was, it was challenging. Yeah. It was challenging. Um, so where'd you go after school of infantry? After that, it was uh, security forces school, mm -hmm. and uh, that was out in Chesapeake, uh, Chesapeake, Virginia, mm -hmm. and um, got there in uh, say like like October. Yeah, got there in October, and it was cold. What year? In '97. Mm. Yeah, '97. So, yeah, and it was cold. It was really cold. Yeah, yeah. It, it would it would get down to. I say really cold now. I'm gonna embarrass myself. It was. It got down to about 30 degrees. Yeah. You know, which, I mean, to me, I mean, that's kid from Southern California. That's freezing. Yeah, you're from yeah. sunny San Diego. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you'd you'd hump out to the range, and, um, you know, you know, if if you if you weren't singing cadence, uh, on the way to the range, uh, by the time you got to the range, it's like you could barely speak. You know, because your your jaw was just so cold and like uh, it was weird. It was the weirdest feeling. You know, you, you just couldn't talk. Um, but that's where we learned how to shoot the M nine, uh, the the nine mil, mm -hmm. the, the Beretta, and we got got a lot of work on the shotgun. Mm. You know, uh, did some rifle work, but it was mainly handguns and, and shotguns. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of uh, close quarters battle training. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, of, a little bit of that. Uh, they they gave us a little bit of taste of that. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't as extensive if you went to like CQB school. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and then uh, from there, where, um, where were you stationed? From there, uh, we had we had a, we had a few choices. We had a wish list. You know, we had uh, Kings Bay, um, which is in, in Georgia. Uh, we had Bahrain. And uh, we had Banger, you know, um, and I had chose Banger because um, I actually wanted to be closer uh, to my girlfriend mm. who was living in, in San Diego. I wanted to be on the same time zone and, and, and everything. So, and I had a friend at the time that also lived in Washington, a childhood friend. Uh, was so. this a girlfriend you've had before you went to the Marines? No, oh. no, no. This is actually my wife now. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, how'd you guys meet? Uh, I met her the day I graduated boot camp. <laughs> the day? The day. How? The day. Um, so it's funny, you know, you come out of boot camp and you're all lean and mean and, you know, I'm going to go conquer the world, you know? And, you know, so I come home and I'm resting and everything. And, I'm, and, and you're exhausted too, though, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm laying in, I'm laying in bed and and my buddies are calling me. They're like, come on, man, we're, we're going to party with you. We want to party tonight. You know, we got some folks coming over to the house and this and that. And I'm like, I don't want to go anywhere. I just want to rest, mm -hmm. you know. And mom says, you need to go. You know, these guys want to party. They haven't seen you in three months. You know, you need to go. So, so I go. 
So we head out and we head over to my buddy Vince's house. And as we're pulling up, uh, me and my best man are pulling up. Um, my friend Joanna pulls up and out the car, out the other side of the car comes my wife, right? And, you know, we were a close group of friends. It was just always us, right. you know? And I see her come out the car. I'm like, I'm like, hey. I'm like, who's that? And, he, and then my buddy's like, he's like, oh, he goes, dude, that's Robin, man. She started kicking with us like, like, a, like a month and a half ago. I'm like, oh, dude, I'm like, I got to meet her. I'm like, what's up with that? I'm like, I leave and, and you guys get new talent, you know? <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know? So I just, I, I meet her and, and, and I tell you, like, like um, she was only 18 at the time. Uh, she was, she just finished her freshman year over at San Diego State, but um, she was, she was beautiful. She was, you know, a lot of fun and uh, we got along like, like really well and, and um, man, 12 days, I, I knew she was it. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I told my mom that too. I said, I said, mom, I said, she's going to have your grandbabies. Yeah. You know? <laughs> What'd your mom say? <laughs> mom said, get out of here. <laughs> she's like, <laughs> get out of here with that. But, so uh, did you end up getting uh, the duty station you wanted? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So I ended up going to Bangor, uh, ended up going to Washington and it's the wettest place on earth, you know? <laughs> what, what would it like... Would, typical day be like um well we had we were on a like a, a rotation so um like one week you'd be training um the other week that you would be like a like a reaction force mm -hmm. you know and then the other week uh you were on a uh, mission so uh, our mission was uh um, protecting strategic weapons mm -hmm. you know at at the time and um and and that could be from, you know, protecting uh, an installation to uh, protecting um, uh, moving, uh, you know, uh, moving the inventory yeah. uh, around the base, you know. Yeah. Um, we did patrols uh, around the base. Now, towards the end of, uh, of being over at Banger, um, I had... <laughs> um, I, I had a I had a medical condition, right? right. And um, uh, I had to get I had to get surgery on the boys, right? Where I was having pain down there. So on the boys, uh, on the boys, yeah. On your nuts. On the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> on your nuts. Oh right? man. So so I go to uh, <laughs> I go to uh, I go to Bremerton the Naval Hospital, right? Right. And. And I go see the go see the doc there, and it's a it's a learning hospital, right? <laughs> so you know the guy there's a colonel or whatever. He's over there, you know, checking him out, and he tells me, he's like, he's he's like, oh yeah, he was, he was yeah, he was he was yeah, we're gonna have to, well, we're gonna have to take this one. I'm like, you're gonna have to take what? He goes, uh, we're gonna have to take your left testicle. <sighs> and I'm like, excuse me. I'm like, listen, it's just a little pain. I mean, I'm not like, I just want to find out what's going on. He's like, he goes, yeah, but it's better if we just take it because it can develop into this. I'm like, mm. I'm like, I'm like, no, thank you, sir. I said, I'm good, you know. So um, I get back, get back to the barracks, and I call Fort Lewis. And um, as I'm setting my appointment, uh, the admin is asking me all this information, my unit, where I'm at, and she's like, where are you at? And I said, I'm at Bangor. I'm, at, I'm at, on a naval base. She's like, you need to go to Bremerton. And I'm like, ma'am, you don't understand. I went there, and this is what they want to do. They want to take my left testicle. And she was like, she's like, oh, no. She's like, auntie so-and-so is going to take care of you. So, <laughs> so she sets me up with an appointment, and I sit down with, uh, with some major over there, and he's telling me I got this, uh, this varicocele, you know. Mm -hmm. He goes, you go in there, small incision, boom, we get get you patched up. He goes, you'll be good to go. And I'm like, I'm like, so you don't have to take my nuts. He's like, he's like, no. He's like, who told you that? I'm like, the squid's up in Bremerton. I'm like, they said you got to take it. So, oh, man. so yeah. So he's like, no. So they did their little thing. And I mean, it's a big thing. And then, <laughs> and 
so I'm recovering, right? I'm, I'm recovering in the, on, on the bed and everything, and, and it's outpatient, you know? And uh, the nurses uh, come by, and the nurses are like, they're two, they're one, like a corporal and a specialist mm -hmm. uh, in the army. And uh, so they come over and they're like, um, they're like, ah, oh, Corporal Roberts, she goes, oh, we need to check your incision. I'm like, do you? And she goes, yeah. I said, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm buck. <laughs> I'm stark. But naked? Stark naked, man. And they're just like, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> it was funny. Yeah. Um, and uh, you were still in the Marines. What, 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 where'd you go after Banger? So we went over Main Side and we hung out there and receiving for about a week. And uh, we got sent over to 3 1, the 3rd Battalion, 1st Marines. Mm. So, so went there, um, did, um, did a lot of, lot of workups and, and exercises, uh, getting ready for our deployment uh, yeah. uh, to head out. Yeah. Going over yeah. there as a sergeant, did they uh, make you a squad leader? What? Well, I, no, I, I went over there as a corporal. Oh, a corporal. Yeah, okay. yeah, I did. I went over there as a corporal and. Um, I was with uh, Lima Company, uh, first platoon. Uh, I was the first fire team leader uh, in that in that one. They made and you a team leader. Team lead, yeah. Okay. Uh, I was a team leader right away, and um, it was funny because I actually had to, uh, and I, and I honestly I was I was embarrassed. You know, I had to I had to rely on my lance corporals to help me figure some stuff out. Mm -hmm. You know, because I I don't think in security forces we were as polished on our infantry tactics as we, as we should have been, right. you know? And so they, you know, they, they helped, uh, you know, get, get us through some stuff. Um, and um, so. So you yeah. end up, you end up going on ship, you end up going on float, mm -hmm. where'd you go? Yeah, um, it was, yeah, Westpac, uh, we left, we left in, I want to say August, August of 2000 mm -hmm. is uh, when we went. So we, we hit a lot of ports. Um, the first one pissed me off. <laughs> we actually hit Hawaii, right? Mm -hmm. And you're thinking, why would that piss you off? You have four days. We were going to have four days of Libo. Mm -hmm. Not us. Not us. Not, not Lima Company. No. We had, we had training. You know? yeah. The rest of the ARG, the rest, everybody else got to go out on Libo for four days. And I have family on Oahu. Family I haven't seen in like, like 20 years, mm. you know? Not 20 years, but at that age, it was probably about, about 10 years or so, you know? And, um, and I couldn't see them. So we were out there humping around on, um, God, there's an army base, an uh, army base out there. So we were doing live fire exercises and stuff. Um, oh, so, so where... So we're out there, and, and um, we had some live fire, but then you know we had the we had the blanks too, right? And I remember we were uh, we were on patrol, and um, my point man Brown, uh, he's up there, and we're we're going, we're we're staggered column, right? And then all of a sudden, Brown goes, right? So we so everybody freezes. And so we're stopped and he's just holding it there for like, like 20, 25 seconds. And you think about it, I mean, that's, that's a long time just to be standing there, right? Mm. And I'm like, Brown, Brown, what's going on, Brown, right? So he starts backpedaling. He starts going back, like peeling off, but he's not giving us any communication, right? And, and so he goes... And, and he's coming towards me. I'm looking at him like, are you crazy? I'm like, what? Brown, what's going on? And then he just yells out, pig. And it was almost on cue. He yells out, pig. And then, oh. and then we get chased by a freaking pig. Oh, shit. You know, we're in a valley. We get chased by a pig. You have Marines with M16s running away from this pig, you know, jumping up trees and everything. And this... <sighs> But the, the pig wasn't gonna do anything to us. It just it ran past us. But it was right. like it was like the funniest thing, man. Well, I you heard know. those pigs are pretty dangerous. They are. They they can be vicious. You know. Thank God it didn't have like there was no babies or anything. Yeah. 
you know, uh, if, if there was babies, and I think that would have been a different story, mm. you know, but it was, it looked like it was solo. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, we got back and uh, back to formation and we're sitting there, we're waiting on, uh, we're waiting on second squad to come back and uh, second squad comes back and they smell like a bonfire and they look like it too. And they're with our, uh, they're with our Lieutenant, uh, I want to say Lieutenant McGraw at the time. Right. Cool dude. But, um, you know, he got lost like, like, like a lot of them. Right. He got us lost, but he would, but he got them lost to the point where they were, um, they were one area and it had somebody shot an alum and they shot it too low. And when it went down, it lit their area on fire and the fire chased them all the way to a Canyon. Oh. And so it was either jump down the cliff or run through the fire. Oh. So they had to run through the fire to get to us. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that was... Shit. Yeah. Anybody get hurt? No, no. They just, like, smelled. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How long were you on uh, uh, pump for? Uh, pump was, like, uh, seven months. Mm. Uh, pump was seven months. And, um, um, you know, yeah, we hit, we hit different areas. We hit... Um, uh, Singapore, um, you know, we we went to Australia. Mm. Uh, we did a uh, a lot of uh, a lot of training with the Aussies and the Kiwis. Yeah. Uh, so that was that was a lot of fun. Uh, but it was actually in, it was in preparation for us to go up to Timor. Um, at the time, uh, right before, like up until recently, uh, Timor had been one nation, had been one uh, country or island. Um, it's on the north side of. Australia, and at the time that we got there, they were going through their civil war, and we were in support of East Timor. So we went up there in, in, in a humanitarian mission, mm -hmm. uh, just flew in supplies, building supplies, food, mm -hmm. uh, things like that, just to secure landing zones, make sure they were able to do their thing and build their structures without, you know, any interference from uh, West Timor, mm -hmm. you know, but... Um, you know, it, I don't think at any time did we feel like we were in any danger during that mm -hmm. mission. You know, I mean, we were all given rounds and and everything. It wasn't, but it was a real mission. Right. But you know, you didn't, you never felt like you were in danger. Right. You know, um, after after that, we hit Singapore, and Singapore was fun. Yeah, see, Singapore was fun. Um, you know, it's it's almost like it's it's like America, but um, but Asian. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they have a Hard Rock. They had, they had a Hard Rock Cafe. They had a Planet Hollywood. They had McDonald's. They had a lot of stuff that you see here in the states. But yeah. then they had things that were unique to them. You know, um, and I remember our we're we're talking with our staff sergeant one night because we were there for like two and a half days, and our staff sergeant one night he he was he was like guys you got to check this place out, and it was a place where they had uh, these these prostitutes, right? And and you would go up this escalator, and they would be behind the glass, right? So we're like, really? We're like, no, that can't be real. And they're like, he's like, yeah, go, you got to go check it out. So we're like, all right. So the next day, we hop in a cab, and and we ask the guy, we're like, hey, hey, um, you know, can you take us to this place? And we're describing. And he's like, he's like, oh yeah, I know exactly where to take you. So, and and he and he was Middle Eastern, right? Remember, uh, or Persian or something. So he takes us, and we're like going away from the city, you know. And we're like, we're like, are you sure? Because, like, it's all dark, and yeah. you know, we're like, are you sure this is the place? He's like, oh yeah, we'll take you there, right? So he gets there, we get there, and he drops us off. We pay him, and he. <laughs> cuts out right and he sticks us in this like it's an industrial place and it's it's a red light district like it's a legit like there's two buildings and it's a long long alley uh, I'd, I'd have to say it was probably like like at least 100 it was at least 100 yards a football field long wow. you, you know of just an alley mm -hmm. right and the building uh like single story buildings uh right 
and they legit had red lights on. And so we start walking down this, this area and there was like six of us. And uh, the six of us, we stayed together because all of us were either married or we were engaged to keep each other out of trouble, you know? And so, so we're there, we're walking and it's, it's all, it's all like Arabic and, and Persian, but it's not pretty, you know, like at all. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's kind of sad, to be honest with you. You know, like, like, like I, like you feel bad. You felt terrible to even be in the presence of, of these ladies, you, you know, yeah. you know, um, like, like I saw a lady in there. She had to be like in her mid fifties, yeah. you know, and you're just thinking that like, that's what you're doing you know, at that age. And, you know, we got, we were, but at the same time, there was like young men there, like around our age that were like Middle Eastern and, and Persian, mm -hmm. you know, made us a little uneasy. And it was funny, like without even saying anything, like we weren't talking to each other at all, but like midway through getting through that, we were actually in staggered column. <laughs> without saying anything yeah. to each other. It's like we had a point guy and we were staggered, and we were all doing this. Like, <laughs> like you're on patrol? Like we were on patrol. It was the mm -hmm. funniest thing, yeah. So, so we get around, and um, yeah, we end, up, we end up heading back to the ship yeah. after that, yeah. Um, when did you get out? I got out in, uh, 2000, uh, in 2001, in March of 2001. And uh, what yeah. rank? Sergeant. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I picked um, up and float. Can you talk about, you know, what it was like for you transitioning out of the, of the military? Um, you know, it was, it, it was challenging um, because I, I didn't, I felt like nobody could really understand, like, like you, you know, you didn't, you didn't have the same uh, camaraderie uh, with, uh, with civilians. Uh, the same like sense of humor, mm -hmm. um, you know, the same, um, I don't know, level of commitment, you know, the, the same stick to you know, um, dedication. I mean, all of those things, you know, it, it was, um, it, it was, it was challenging, you know, at, at times, uh, yeah, to, to go through that, you know, but, you know, I mean, you, you adapt. Right, you know, you, you you adapt and 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 you learn to get along. But you know, I was out for gosh. When I was out, I I missed it. You know, I missed the guys and you know I missed the camaraderie. Right. You know, um, but you know where was in in you know I got out in March of two thousand one and then. 9-11 happened, you know, and I remember, um, I remember that uh, where I was, I was, um, I was at my, my in-law's house. My in-laws were in the Philippines at the time, so I was keeping my wife company, um, and um, she, she wakes me up, and she's like, she's like, babe, have you seen this yet? And I wake up to, I think, I want to say it had to be around 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning, you know, or something like that, yeah. you know, yeah. and she, she's like, have you, she, she goes, look, you know, and I remember, you know, watching everything unfold, you know, and, and I was like sick to my stomach, you know, I was sick to my stomach just watching everything and, and, um, you know, that I remember that day, it was like, like, I was like in silence, you know, that, that day, because, you know, knowing what, what's coming after that, you know, and, and how to respond and, you know, I was so angry for, you know, our country that, you know, our soil was violated and everything. And, um, and I would say that that's, to this day, uh, it's it's one of my for me personally it's one of my more challenging 
parts of, that I got to deal with for me, like like personally, because I was only six months re uh, removed mm -hmm. from the military. I was still in great shape, you know, and you know the thought of you know um, of enlisting, of getting, of going back in. It was it was definitely there, you know. I really thought about it, but. I think, you know, the one thing that that stopped me from from enlisting uh, is my dad. You know, um, my dad doing two tours in Nam and um, being exposed to Agent Orange and you know passing away um, at at the young age of uh, forty one. Mm. You know, um, and he was a mountain of a man, you know, he wasn't very tall. I mean, he was tall to me. He was 5'8", you know, but I mean, he was he was 5'8", probably about 220, but he was, you know, he was a big dude, mm -hmm. you know, and um, and to see what what that did to him and just how like. You know, he wasn't there all the time. And again, it's not, not his fault. You know, I mean, he, um, I think in a sense he felt like he had to because, you know, my, my mom had AIDS, right? So he had to stay there for the medical care, you know, for her, right? And, um, you know, but, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't present like all the time. And I think the war had an effect on him too in certain ways where um, I wasn't, maybe he wasn't able to give me some of the instruction that he wanted to, or that I should have gotten all the time, you know? Um, and, and even though I didn't have a family yet, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this woman who I know is gonna be my wife, you know? And I'm thinking about the children that I'm going to have, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, and I chose that, you know, I chose that. And it, I, I think, you know, when I, I, I think that's one of the things that, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for our brotherhood, you know, for, for the Marines. But I, I think like when I'm in the presence of of my my brothers and sisters that that chose to go over there that went there you know um it it doesn't sit well with me you know that that I chose that you know but in a way but then I sit back and I look at it and I'm, I'm grateful though, because I'm whole. Right. You know, I'm whole for my kids. I'm, I'm whole for my wife. I'm, I'm not dealing with certain things that my brothers and sisters aren't dealing with. But then at the same time, on, on the flip, it, you know, um, it's, It's not an easy feeling because because you are whole, you, you know what I mean. Because you did, you chose that other path, you know. And um, I, I think that's you know for me that's been you know challenging to to kind of to deal with because I I love this brotherhood. I love you know um, you know being around my brothers and sisters. I love. Um, just being around other veterans, mm -hmm. you know, I uh, got good fr friends that are veteran vets uh, from the Air Force, from the Army, you know, from from everywhere. And we give each other crap, yeah. you, you know, but, you know, we all signed up to do the same thing, you know. And, and you know, I know that I, I think, you know, entering in into boot camp, you know, I, I went in with the mentality that. You know, I'm signing up and I'm going to do my four years. I knew that I was only going to do four years and get out. 
It was never my intention to make it a career. Mm. You know, I wanted to get out and I wanted to get into law enforcement. And, and, and I was going to use that as a stepping stone, you know. And, but I said, hey, you know, if, if war comes our way while I'm in, then, you know, so be it. And that's, that's what it is, right? Right. You know, but, you know. What kind it, of, uh, uh, what kind of things do you see uh, other veterans, uh, friends, brothers, sisters, uh, that did go over there mm-hmm. uh, and serve in combat maybe, uh, can you talk about what type of things they struggle with? What you've noticed? Maybe you've been around them or talked to them? Or... Yeah. You know, I, I just think that, you know, sometimes, um, you know, um, the hearts are hardened, you know? Um, and, you know, even though um, uh, some of those with... Um, you know, their relationships and, you know, um, maybe vices or how they handle stress or, you know, or how they handle crowds, um, you know, just certain, certain aspects and, you know, just certain outlooks in life, you know, and, um, yeah, so that's, I think that's what I've, what I've, what I've seen now, but I'll tell you that, my friends I know that are that are combat vets, they are the most loyal, the strongest, the most ride or die cats that you'll ever run into. You know, um, they will always have you back. You know, no no matter what, and um, you know, good or bad or what have you, and um, you know, it's but but you see that too. You know, I see, um, I'm going to tell you the truth, um, I, I, I get that feeling just being around any veteran, uh, any Marine, whether it, be, whether it be a combat vet or not. Like, mm-hmm. it's just something about running into, uh, especially the Marines, um, and maybe the Army, running into another Army guy, mm-hmm. feel the same way. I don't know, I can't speak for other branches, but... Mm-hmm. Um, there's something about just being out in town somewhere, uh, you know, seeing a Marine Corps tattoo mm-hmm. and being able to connect with somebody mm-hmm. um, just from that, uh, yeah. you know. And, um, yeah, I feel like, you know, I mean, the band of brothers, right? That's just what it is. And uh, personally, I don't like uh, the distinction between a combat vet uh, and non-combat because... Uh, ultimately, it, it, I mean, it's not really a decision for us to make, you know, mm-hmm. you, it just depends on which time you're in the military, which mm-hmm. unit you were in, like, you didn't fucking make the decision, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, and, uh, um, but I get what you're saying, you know, a lot of, a lot of guys feel like that, um, but, yeah. uh. And this is why we're doing this here, you know, what we're doing mm-hmm. with these, um, getting you guys to sit down and tell your story because mm-hmm. it all, it's everybody that chose to uh, give a portion of their lives uh, to their country uh, is, is special. Like, that's a special fucking thing to do. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, I think it's less than 7% uh, of the population chooses to do that, mm-hmm. uh, to serve. You know, so you're fucking part of that 7%. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, and I'm not a statistics guy, but I think I did Google it <laughs> yeah. not too long ago. And that's I think, what it I think it's actually, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. It's, it might be less than that. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and I really pushed that. I really pushed that here with this project because, you know, we don't give a fuck if you're combat, not combat, male, female, Army, Navy, Air Force, Reserve, Coast Guard. We really don't give a shit. Um mm-hmm. We understand that you have a story to tell, and it's important. And uh, you know, we don't see you any different than any other veteran. Um, and 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 I think you should feel that way too. You, you shouldn't you shouldn't feel any less mm. uh, of a marine or person or veteran 
than you know somebody who was in combat. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And your decision to uh, not reenlist, um, you know, when 9/11 came up. I mean, if you look at it with the perspective of, you know, you have a, a daughter who's uh, 17, right? Mm -hmm. Your son is how old? Uh, he's 13. Your son's yeah. 13. So imagine if you were dealing with all the fucked up problems of PTSD, uh, anxiety, depression, um, and your kid's having to deal with that. It's, uh, you know, you said it earlier that you're whole, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, you're happy you're whole, but sometimes uh, you feel guilty because you want to feel like some of your other brothers or sisters feel uh, because of what they went through. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, your family is important and it's important for your daughter and your son mm -hmm. uh, to have a father who's whole like, 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 like yourself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, you know, so the, the years went on and... You know, so I'm at the two year mark now and it's 2003 and I'm really kind of getting annoyed <laughs> with just like being a civilian, you know, and, you know, I'm telling my wife how much I miss the guys and stuff. Right. Well, we're uh, we're planning our wedding, you know, and we're down in San Diego. And um, so I go to my grandparents house. I was living there right before we moved up and. I, I'm like, you know, I'm just going to go up in the room and I'm going to grab some stuff, you know. Well, I go, I go in my room, which is now my sister's room. I go in the room and grab some stuff and I just happen to glance. Not even on purpose. I happen to glance and I look at the floor and I see this letter, this Western Union telegram sticking out from underneath the bed. And it says to Sergeant Richard J.C. Roberts. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like... I felt like Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah. That's a name I haven't heard <laughs> in a long time. Right. Right? So I'm like, what the hell is this? So I open it up, and it's orders to report the next day. And I'm like, what? I'm like, are you kidding me? You know? So, you know, I call. I go down, and, or I call the following day, and I'm like, hey. I'm like, look. I'm like, I, I can't... Um, I can't make it in today, you know, I just got the letter, I had moved and so on and so forth. I'm like, can you give me like three weeks, you know? And, um, and they're like, yeah, they're like, yeah, that's, that's fine. He goes, you are going to come in though, right? And I thought that was the silliest question, you know what I mean? That, that made me to believe, I'm like, well, there's, there's cats not showing up, Yeah. you know? I'm like, yes, I'm like, yes, you guys are telling me to come back, I'm, I'm on my way, you know? And, you know... At the time, I looked a lot like I do now. I was like, you know, 40, 40 50 pounds heavier than, uh, than when I left the core. And, um, you know, I, I looked at my wife and I told her, I'm like, look, um, you know, we're going to scrap this wedding and we're just going to get hitched now. We're just going to go to Vegas because, I don't know, maybe in six months you'll be able to buy a house, you know. You know, let's, let's just go, you know, mm -hmm. so... So we go to Vegas, uh, we get married, and we come back, and uh, I show up in alphas, right? I show up, and, um, and I was over at Area 64, uh, and over at Talega, and um, so I show up, and, and the guy's like, Sergeant Roberts. I'm like, I'm like yep. I said, well, do you want, um, you, we, we need an SOG for the camp. Do you want to be... SOG, you want to be sergeant of the guard? I'm like, I'm like, like stay here. And he's like, yeah. I said, Pff. <laughs> like you got it, <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know. Wow. So they just made me SOG. Yeah. And it was funny. It was like th there was like 16 of us, and we were all NCOs. They were all sergeants and corporals. We had like we had one lance corporal with us, you know, um, maybe maybe two, but the rest of us were NCOs. You know, uh, running patrols and everything, and um, yeah. So, so we were there for a year. Hmm. Yeah. Um, what do you think about this project? I, I think it's amazing, and I, I think uh, you know I want to encourage uh, you know veterans to come out and you know give their testimony and uh, to let folks know um, you know what 
what it is that we do and um, you know what it is exactly it is that we sign up for and what we're prepared to do um, and we do it with a sense of pride and um, you know n not to sound cliche or or corny or anything but we really do it for the love of our country and uh, for the flag and uh, for our ethos and and I don't think that anybody will claim that our country is perfect in any way but uh, we are the best thing that's going out there and uh, we have a lot to be proud of and um, you know so to uh, come out and tell tell your story and uh, just to be heard and you know to to those out there that are listening that aren't um, that have never served uh, you know um, you know I, I think that you know when you come across a, um, a veteran and, and uh, especially our combat vets is, uh, you know, to be, to be gracious, you know, because you have no idea um, what these men and women have been through. Um, uh, just because we watched Saving Private Ryan, that's, I don't even know. And, um, Hey, Rick, appreciate you being here, brother, and telling mm -hmm. your story. Yeah, thanks for having me, Make Josh. a big impact. Thanks, brother. Yeah, thanks. Push it to the limit, I can't go no more. Red light, no way, I'm coming back home. Long dirt road all on my own.